I'm your Gemini friend. So this video is going to be about Saturn, which is usually a very heavy topic. And that's not to say that I'm not going to make it heavy, uh, but I think I have a sort of different stance than people tend to with Saturn, because yes, it is a malefic planet. It is heavy, it's hard, it's difficult, but like, we need it. We need Saturn's energy in order to perfect and master ourselves. It's like a necessary evil, but I think the better relationship that we have with the energy of Saturn and of Capricorn, the 10th house, and hard work in general, our midheaven, our career, our legacy, the less we see it as an enemy and as a hard time and as something that's like a struggle that we have to suffer through, and the more we see it as the greatest teacher that we can have, the more we can really harness this energy and become the best versions of ourselves. So I'm going to be over what Saturn represents in our natal chart, but also the overall significance, not just within astrology, but within the whole world. What Saturn represents on this material plane, on Earth, where we're living and within our human realities. And I'm not going to be glossing over the hard things, but I am going to be explaining the significance of them and the importance of them. And I do also offer personal natal chart readings and synastry readings if you're interested in that. My information is in the description. But okay, Saturn. Keywords for Saturn, we have limitations, restriction, reality, lessons, structure, consequences, boundaries. Everyone has Saturn in a sign and house somewhere in their chart. And that house that Saturn is in, it's going to be a difficult area for you, at least for the first 30-ish years of life. And I'm considering doing a series on Saturn in the houses. Let me know if you're interested in that or any other variations of it. But the house that we have Saturn, we tend to have delays and struggles. And basically, we're forced to recognize our boundaries, our limits, and the ways that we kind of confine ourselves. And everything that's relevant to Saturn within the natal chart, let's think of Capricorn energy, which is ruled by Saturn. The 10th house, which is also related to this, and then the midheaven, which represents our legacy, our public image, the way that we're seen in a more professional or career-focused way. But what this is, is Saturn makes us aware of our limitations in the strongest way that we are all mortal. We're all going to die someday, but the midheaven is connected to our legacy and a way that we can live on, a way that we can transcend our human lifetime and create something that outlives us, something that represents our effort in this lifetime. And effort is another key word with Saturn because it does take effort. And I think that this is one of the reasons why it's so demonized sometimes. Because yes, it makes things hard, but it makes things hard so that we will have to push through these difficulties and become a better version of ourselves. Saturn is seen as an oppressor, as a cruel taskmaster or gatekeeper. It's got very sinister connotations. But if we're looking at reality, we kind of have to be limited. This world that we're living in, it's one of duality. We have our opposites, our contrast, which is the way that we learn through what we don't like, what we do like, what we don't want to experience again, and what we are unable to do. But these limits are necessary for our growth because we can't just skip forward several steps and expect to have all of the experience that we would have had if we had gone through all of those steps. These boundaries essentially keep us in like the level that we're at. It's like leveling up and taking shortcuts. It's just not an option wherever you have Saturn. That is really the worst thing that you can do to yourself is to try to cheat yourself out of that growth experience. And there are several examples I've become very aware of lately, particularly the movie The Substance, which I believe is based off of the picture of Dorian Gray and that idea of trying to cheat aging, trying to ignore or push aside that mortality like it won't catch up to us. Obviously, the consequences in both of these stories are extreme, but I really equate them to Saturn and this idea of we need to respect the balance and we need to respect ourselves throughout the process. Because Saturn does come with high expectations. It's a heavy planet because wherever we feel that sense of weight, it's a sign of us 
like knowing on a core level that we do have influence in this area, that we can affect other people or our life in a very strong way, but it can be very scary. It's super scary to do something that you know you could be good at, but you aren't yet. Or you you can see your potential, but knowing that you are going to fail multiple times on the way there, that risk of failure can really put a lot of people off. But failure isn't a bad thing. It's a sign of our effort. It's a sign that we are trying. And if you stop at failure, I mean, yeah, sure, that's the end, but you don't have to stop. You can keep pushing through it or finding alternative paths or recognize that sometimes the limitations indicate like this is not for you. You have to look for what is for you because you will be allowed to go on that path if it is for you. Saturn is never going to stop you outright. It delays because Saturn is attached to time and time is another one of those necessary structures within this reality. Like we can consider how free we would be if we had no concept of time and no like obligations, making appointments and being aware of time. It can be stressful, but it also creates structure and rules for us to follow. Honestly, think about how confusing things would be if we did not have time. Even just having days and nights, this has always been present because it's a necessity. We need that division of day and night. We need to recognize that like daytime work, nighttime rest. And obviously that's not always the case for everybody, but the idea of day and night, the idea of any opposites, it's it's the law, the laws of the universe. Saturn rules these laws. And in that way, it's equated to, you know, authority figures, to the people in charge, those people who are controlling and restricting us and limiting our freedom. And that's where we kind of get stuck in this negative view of Saturn and a negative view of our restrictions, but often laws are in place to protect us. And Saturn specifically, it requires us to keep the balance, to take care of ourselves, and not just to endlessly work, not just to push through and work hard constantly, but also to take the necessary rest, to balance taking care of ourselves with taking care of our path. It takes patience. And patience is a difficult thing nowadays. Like, just attention spans in general. It seems like it's harder for people to get through things that if given the time might actually really benefit us. I honestly think that like most people need more patience, more, more time where they're not distracted by things that are like instant gratification. Saturn is not instant gratification. And if we become too used to instant gratification, it just ruins us. Like everybody knows on some level that things that take time are higher quality. The more effort you put into something, it's not just that you'll have a better result, but it means more to you. That time and effort that we put into something adds to the significance and the overall value. And having our patience tested and also our integrity. Saturn can test our integrity. We want to be the best versions of ourselves. And sometimes it takes integrity not to cut corners. Like even if you're not being watched and you can get away with it. Recognize that Saturn's kind of always watching us and paying attention to the way that we do things, the effort that we put into it and the care and attention, but it's for our good. Like even if everybody else is getting away with putting out a subpar product with little effort, if you go against that and you put your all into it, even if you're not noticed and recognized up front, you will be rewarded for this. Saturn is also related to karma and really to our karma throughout life times, the relationships that we have with other souls and situations that were unfinished. And of course, the idea of if you keep avoiding the hard things in this lifetime, that doesn't mean that you're going to get out of it. It means that in the next lifetime, your soul wants to learn these lessons. It's not punishment. It's coming from within us, but we forget when we're here. It's really hard to remember and to even accept that we might have wanted to learn these lessons before we came into this lifetime. But I do see Saturn and our 10th house and our overall path in life as being very closely related to these lessons. I think that we learn through our past lifetimes and we build up skills that we're meant to use. And thinking of things in those terms, like building up skills, throughout lifetimes only to use them in a future life. I mean, 
That's a very long-term way of thinking, but consider your effort in past lives and don't cheat yourself out of doing what you might be intended to do in this lifetime. Saturn is, again, heavy because it's felt deeply, because it's not shallow. It's not just some momentary thing. There is so much leading up to Saturn-related things. But if you're aware of whatever your Saturn lesson is, and you're working on it, we still will have our Saturn return. This happens when we're 29 or 30, and all of these things will compound and become so present and really so necessary to look at. So long as we've been aware and we are willing to look at and address these things and do those heavy but fulfilling tasks to face the test, things will get easier, I promise. That's how it's set up to be. Saturn it's mastery of the material realm and the idea that once we have mastered it, then we can go on to our higher purpose. Because after the 10th house, we have the 11th and 12th houses, which are higher purpose and our our higher goals and connection to society and people and souls. But each individual person is a significant part of all of us, all of this. So you are intended to play your role and you do have complete freedom to not work on whatever you don't want to. Like, Saturn isn't going to force us in the present, but consider consequences. Consequences for ignoring these areas where we're tested. It only hurts us. Going back to the substance and Dorian Gray for a second, we might think in the moment that we are benefiting from something, but if it feels too good to be true, if it feels like you're cheating, you are truly cheating yourself. The The point within these examples is that in both stories, there is a conscious and awake self that gets to experience youth and beauty, but at the sacrifice of th their soul. Just starting to push those boundaries creates a sort of slippery slope where they will continue to push and then make things worse and worse. And both of those stories end absolutely horrifically. This idea of things catching up to you. I can absolutely understand why Saturn seems scary when you're thinking about it on those terms, because it does limit us. It shows us the proper amount of give and take, and if we take too much, we're taking from ourselves, ultimately. But Saturn is not the enemy. People love to find villains. They love to have a bad guy or the evil side while we're on the good side. But what Saturn really wants us to understand is when we cheat ourselves, we are the true villain. Saturn wants us to be aware of that because there's no way around it. In this reality, like yes, our souls are intended to be completely limitless and free, but on Earth, in these incarnations, we do have limits. There's no way around that. And I see Saturn as essentially protecting us from complete self-destruction. Because balance is something that we need to learn in life. And having mastery over that, over doing the things that don't feel good in the moment necessarily, or maybe they're boring, or maybe they're rigorous, but afterwards we feel great. Simple example, the benefits of working out. You don't see immediate results, but you do start to feel the strength. And if you stick with it, then you do see those results. But it's about building up stamina. Think of limitations of Saturn as our physical limitations when exercising. You have to build up your stamina. You can't just run for an hour the first time you try. You do need to take it in smaller increments, but when you have reached a certain point, your boundaries, they grow, and you build your stamina, and you're able to go for a longer time the next time, but you can't skip those steps. You can't go from novice to pro in a day, but that's where the value is. That's why we value things that take time and effort, because not everybody can do them, because not everybody is willing to put in the effort, and everybody has their thing. Everybody has whatever it is that for them, they are meant to build their stamina. They're meant to master and learn how to do it in a way that is exceptional, in a way that's exemplary for other people. So wherever you have Saturn, this area of life is meant to go slowly for you because you're meant to build your stamina. You're meant to 
be growing at a slow and steady rate because it's important. It's important not to push it, but it is also important that you get there. So patience, patience with ourselves, patience with time and life in general. Saturn forces us to learn patience because it recognizes the importance of it. It represents the rules that we absolutely must respect. And it is not comfortable. It's not meant to be comfortable, but that's where the real value comes in because then you can be proud of yourself for what you've done. You've done a difficult thing and maybe nobody knows how hard it was for you. But that feeling of fulfillment there's nothing else like it. And one of the reasons why I'm talking about Saturn is because I am at the very end of my Saturn return. And doing the work, let me tell you, it's incredible. I didn't want to go there. But through working through what I had to, I actually came to realize that the goal is different from what I thought. I thought that I was going to have to get really good at one particular thing. And then my lesson ends up being something that actually felt so much better than what I expected. Something that I feel like fit me in a very specific and personal way. And that's how it is for you as well. Your specific Saturn placement, the aspects to Saturn, and planets that you have in the 10th house, planets that you have in the same house as Saturn, all of these things make up your own personal thing. And this combination is so uniquely suited to you. It's usually not just as basic as like, I have Saturn in the 11th house, I have delays and have to slowly learn 11th house thing. There are so many other things at play. And take any house you have Capricorn on the cusp of, any Capricorn placement. Capricorn energy natally can actually really help with Saturn because it shows an inherent understanding of this effort reward system. And maybe my Capricorn moon makes me more willing to tolerate this oppressive energy. But I truly believe that embracing it rather than cowering or demonizing it, hating it, choosing to suffer more within your struggle than you need to, or creating a situation where you see Saturn as the oppressor and you as the victim, that's only disempowering. Saturn intends to empower us. And I truly don't believe it's this big evil that so many things make it out to be. I don't believe that it's here to oppress us. I truly think that we incarnate here for personal reasons and for growth purposes. And it's very easy to avoid the growth and to try to focus more on what's comfortable and what feels good in the moment. But this is ultimately cheating ourselves. That's really what all this comes down to and why I keep repeating it because treating Saturn as the enemy cheats you out of what it has to teach you, what you have to teach yourself. And the timing is very personal. If you're wondering if like, say you're a teenager and you're aware of your Saturn lesson and you're actively working on it, that absolutely benefits you leading up to your Saturn return. But we can't expedite something that is so strongly related to time. Things will grow and evolve within your lifetime, but you do still have to kind of wait to the Saturn return in order to really reach like the peak of what it is that you've been meant to learn. All of the lessons that you have learned up until then will be present as Saturn is returning to its natal position within your chart. But that awareness helps so much. You will have an easier Saturn return if you're focused on doing things in the Saturn way. But you can't evade it entirely. But you don't want to. Because I can't tell you how wonderful this feeling of freedom is now that I have realized that I'm the one who restricted myself in this area my entire life. I created these limits for myself through my experiences, through difficult experiences, and through obviously an avoidance of those things that were painful, but through realizing that ultimately I'm the one with control and that I can face these things that have been so difficult, now it's not scary anymore. I genuinely do feel free when I never had that before. This is literally what I've been craving my entire life, but not everybody has the awareness or the information to truly work on that Saturn return if they're not, you know, made aware of it at that time. Our life experiences do bring these lessons to us regardless of whether we know our Saturn placement or not. But if you find that you are past your Saturn return and you still struggle with these areas, just work on it. It's not like this is our only window. It's just that that's when everything gets so unavoidable 
inescapable and deeply difficult that sometimes not having that awareness can cause people to shut down. But Saturn is one of those things that we really do need to work through in order to like continue on with the rest of our lives. Because what it does is it creates a base feeling of security. Like, okay, I've dealt with the hardest part of my life. I finally get it. I've overcome it. Now I can handle anything. That's what the point of it is, to feel like we truly can handle anything within this incarnation, in this lifetime. It's dealing with the hardest thing first for a very specific and unique to you purpose. We have our Saturn lessons so that we can truly thrive in the way that we're meant to. Using myself as an example again, I have Saturn in the 11th house and I do know that I'm meant to be sharing messages. I know that I'm meant to be sharing myself. However, I have always hated public attention, hated being perceived entirely, and wish that I could just fade away completely. But I wasn't allowed to do that. And now, I don't care. I genuinely don't care. I'm no longer afraid of people. I've been terrified of people my entire life, and I'm not anymore. And this serves my specific purpose as a messenger, and as somebody who has such a strong desire to help and heal people. For me, that purpose is strong enough to overlook all of the fear that comes with public vulnerability being seen. So. Finding your thing, whatever it is that makes you feel like you can do that hard thing because there's something more meaningful behind it. Saturn helps prepare us for what we're meant to do. And last thing I want to talk about is that with Saturn's karmic energy, uh, this can also be very strongly related to generational issues and trauma and patterns and Strong Saturn influence in your chart or in certain areas of your chart can absolutely represent that weight of generations before you, your family line, and potentially being somebody who breaks those negative patterns. Because Saturn has a strong tie to ancestry and to family, because it is a very supportive energy. The axis of the MC and the IC, Capricorn and Cancer, are about many things, but ultimately like family and the roots, and then public legacy, that balance between work and home, between personal destiny, and whether it's like obligations or people that you do care about and want to support, that balance between work and home, effort and self-care is such an important balance to pay attention to. Saturn wants us to take care of our vessel as well. It wants us to respect our physical limitations. It doesn't want us to just work ourselves to death, work our bodies into exhaustion. That's not the point. Balance is very important here. That's why these laws are present. That's why we can't just work 48 hours straight, or we shouldn't. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's up to the individual, but we, our bodies have our limitations for a reason because we're not meant to be constantly productive. We are meant to take care of ourselves as well. And what better way to take care of yourself than to master the self or even just to improve? I'm using the word mastery like we have a specific high goal to reach, but doing the best that we can is always enough. Saturn doesn't want you to push past those boundaries, but it does want you to push the boundaries of what you might think you are capable of. When I say boundaries, I'm talking very specifically about like literal boundaries, walls, true limitations. We are boxed in to keep us safe until we're ready to widen the box. And the more you make friends with this concept and make friends with Saturn, the less it's going to feel like a necessary evil and the more it's going to feel like the most wonderful teacher you could possibly have. Society has such a warped view of like work ethic and just all of it. It's very difficult. I'm not at all trying to downplay the difficulty of this concept, but I truly want to set you free and help you to understand that this is here for our own good. Even our most difficult struggles and the feelings of wanting to just give up, I get that. It's a very human thing to be like, I just can't deal with this anymore. So even there, finding the balance between using discipline to put effort into what is important to you steadily, it's about that slow and steady, patience, time, and effort. It does not have to be scary. We can go about it gradually. You want to keep that internal balance, the feeling of being ready. It's not going to push you 
beyond what you're ready for. It's preparing you for that next step. Okay, I'm repeating myself a lot, so I'm going to stop it here. But I really want to dispel the idea that Saturn is something bad. Ultimately, think of Saturn as like gravity. It, like, yeah, it keeps us down. We can't fly. But through hard work and ambition, people have discovered ways to fly. I don't know. I love you. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. And please feel free to share your experiences or your placements or anything that you want to. I really, truly hope that this is helpful. Bye.